so greetings from Finland. We are very happy uh, to be part of the Novigado final conference and congratulations to all uh, you active uh, Novigado people for, for getting the project run as well as it, it has been. So, so for us, it's a great pleasure to share uh, what we've done in our learning spaces. And, and we like to think of the whole school, uh, not just the classrooms and such as, as an innovative learning space. Um, today we'll be discussing or maybe showing a little bit more in detail of what Professor Heppel was uh, showing. We bought like um, of sensors into the learning spaces and, and we're trying to uh, find ways of gathering data and, and using technology and using sensors uh, to get rid of, let's say, the obstacles for learning. And, and one data we would like to receive from you is um, the, some feelings of today. You know, you've had about an hour of remote um, webinar for the moment. So there are two questions. Um, we'll get started, started on those. So just uh, go to the mentee and uh, we'll have a look at the results. So how are you feeling today? Uh, and just we'll be very quick in this just about 20 seconds or so because this is uh, just for for you know this is the kind of things we can also and especially as as uh, Professor Heppel was was explaining about the changes in in um, let's say during the COVID times and such that uh, you know the well-being of the students was something that uh, was not that easily taking into consideration. But very happy to see all of you feeling quite good. There are some who are, are not feeling like the best possible. And of course, if we have this kind of information also from our learners, it is of relevance to us as teachers. But going to the next question, uh, I'll just activate that. Uh, so feel free to uh, share your opinions about four statements I have written. Uh, I'm able to shift off and at the end of the day, um, I feel my manager cares about my mental health. I regularly get asked how I feel according to the stress curve and my work-life balance is good. Now that we have people who are working also from home uh, more and more, you know, it's good to find a balance. That's something that uh, I, well, I don't struggle with, but uh, something that I'm, I'm still trying to learn uh, because there are so many interesting things you get to part of, you get to be a part of uh, in education. But we'll let this uh, slides, you'll, you'll be more than happy to uh, answer those if we, we can go back to those if, if we want, but um, I'll give Mikko the floor and uh, we'll go to, to some of the conditions about the physical space. Thank you, Sampo. I'll continue from this. And good afternoon, everyone. Greetings from Tampere, Finland. It's nice to see so many people taking part to the webinar. Um, I wasn't able to join the earlier part, but I bet you had um, uh, interesting talks before us. And as Sampo mentioned, um, we are talking about uh, sensors in learning and getting rid of the obstacles. And we both work in flexible uh, learning environments. And at least in Finland, there are many suspicions about and even misconceptions about uh, flexible environments, especially uh, the sound levels. Quite a a lot of people think that uh, openness means noise and restlessness, and we would like to think that it's not that black and white. And as a result of that, we've been studying uh, the importance of learning environment conditions for learning and school in gen enjoyment in general. We feel in Finland that uh, enjoying the school is very important as well, not only the learning or the joy of learn learning makes it a bit more easier to actually learn so we have um, compared uh, carbon dioxide levels and the sound levels in open learning environment and a 
conventional classroom. We have two different solutions in FC Lab Tampere, where I work. Uh, we have joined uh, with telecom operator Telia. Uh, they are working our partner in this, and we have sort of plug and play um, sensors and the internet platform, which gives us uh, um, the instant numbers of the um, CO2 levels, uh, temperature, humidity, uh, sound pressure, and things like that. And we try to find um, if the open or the flexible learning environments varies from the traditional one. And in Joensuu, where Sample works, on the other hand, the same thing has been done by the university's own experts. So we try to find different ways of catering the data and after that using the data, which is the important thing, not just getting the numbers, but what happens after that. And there's some charts about our numbers. It's quite small, but uh, I'll try to explain the main things there. Uh, so the CO2 levels and the sound pressure are the most important for us. And the, usually the sound pressure seems to be somewhere uh, around 50 decibels, the average during the day. There are, of course, peaks every now and then, but um, it seems like uh, it's not that loud as people might think. Actually, the highest sound pressure we have measured in Tampere was on a Friday night in December when teachers were having a party and we were making so much noise. And we did install uh, sensors to staff room as well. And we didn't tell the teachers that we have the sensors there. And we have been gathering the data from there also and noticed that the staff room uh, noise is uh, greater than the one we actually make in the cafeteria where hundreds of children are eating. So it seems like uh, we tend to hear the children's noise to be higher than ours, even though the adults seem to make the almost same same noise. And if you sample put the next slide on, there's the um, numbers from longer time frame. And as you can see, the averages are uh, where they should be. So it, <clears throat> it's around 40 or 50 decibels. Uh, the numbers in the right hand side uh, chart is a bit lower than it sh should be because there's uh, times, than, um, times when the space where we measure the data, it's not in use. So, uh, I will add about 10 decibels to that, but it gives the idea that it's it's not that loud in our our space, at least. And Sambo can tell you a bit more about the numbers in Joensu, but they seem to be similar. And the charts tell you something, but then you need to um, do a bit more as well. And please, Sambo, put the next slide. We did a comparison between an open learning space and traditional classroom. We had an analysis made uh, where we compared the numbers between a normal or traditional classroom and the one where I work, the um, more flexible and open, quite large classroom in general. And the results are promising. The amount of carbon dioxide and the temperature and air quality in the open learning environment would appear to be better than in, in the normal classroom. So that's something we actually get. We benefit from having more air and space here. So uh, that's what we wanted to heard and did did actually measure the data and it proves that those uh, sensors, that sensor data is is what we would hope it to be. But the sound pressure levels, uh, it's not um, 
well, the numbers are almost the same. Uh, it's a bit higher decibels in, in the open space than in the uh, traditional one, but the difference was sort of marginal. And it's difficult to say, is it only the space or is it the way we work in different spaces? In traditional class, we tend to uh, teach traditionally. But in the open space, we tend to give children a bit more freedom and they can select where they work and they have uh, sort of more possibilities to actually uh, be to take ownership of their own learning. And that's what we like them like to see them to do. So I don't actually mind that the decibels might be a bit higher if uh, the thing, uh, the um, situation in general seems to be uh, quiet enough so that everyone can actually learn that. And this is only a very concise overview of the development work being done in FC Lab Tampere and Joensu. And Sambo will actually tell you uh, more about the sensor data and what happens with the data and how do we continue from the numbers to actually try to find, um, well, what, uh, try to find ways to use it to make learning easier and better and the children to enjoy in the school more. And Sambu will also tell you something about variables uh, and what they might bring to us. Um, there's some question about how do you measure the data a day or longer? Uh, we uh, well, the system saves the data all the time. So we've had it for two years now. So we have data from from very long time frame already, and we try to uh, gather data all the time. And every now and then, look at the numbers: are they rising or where they are going? And we also try to sort of find a way for schools to do the same. So we like we would like to commercialize a system which could easily be brought to a school and someone could actually try it in their own space, just plug it in and try if it works and how, what sort of numbers they do get in their, their uh, classroom or uh, learning environment. So this is something we've been trying and starting here and we try to um, make it easier for the other schools to continue from this or do the similar thing in their school to know how well their space is actually working. And sometimes it might be even important to just check the CO2 levels in, in uh, a classroom because if there's too high numbers there, it might be a reason for someone not to learn and then there's a problem which should be solved and te technology might help us doing so. But uh, as we don't have much time, I'll give Sambo the possibility to continue from that and I'll thank you all. Thank you, Mikko. Uh, so as, as Mikko mentioned, uh, the data is gathered all of the time and and on the left you can see the data that we're collecting here in, in Joensuu. Uh, going back to the keynote in the beginning, uh, you can also see that the temperature that is uh, being in those spaces, this is one open space with uh, let's say about five sensors. Uh, so there are a little bit differences, but, but um, anyhow the space is, is sen censored. Uh, so as normal teachers, if we see like the levels of carbon dioxide, you know, uh, without listening to the keynote, we wouldn't understand that, okay, it needs to be like under 1,200 inside for like a satisfactory level. Uh, so going from, from the data into, let's say the visualization. Uh, so that's something that we, we try to develop so, so that, um, you know, the data that you are able to see either the teachers or the students uh, that that the uh, uh, let's say information is understandable. 
So so we just made like this kind of easy charts that you know are easily easily looked at, at from this picture. You can see that the temperature is is too high, uh, the carbon dioxide level is good, um, and so on. The decibels of of the spaces uh, are okay. Um, Ecofone did a large survey, and I guess the average, uh, let's say, classroom noise level was about 65 decibels. Uh, I'm not saying that that should be something we should look into uh, as as they being so high, they should be a little bit lower. Uh, and the space itself shouldn't be louder than, let's say, so unoccupied classrooms shouldn't be more than 35 decibels. But but looking into this kind of things that, you know, uh, we get to work with so many interesting things, and, and this is just one of them. Uh, so going back to the keynote, uh, that is really exciting to be part of uh, education in this time, because, you know, we have a lot of devices. I wear like a smartwatch, uh, which gathers a lot of information for me. And, and you know, from data uh, to results and conclusions, uh, that's something that is of relevance, whether it be us adults or the children. Our phones, you know, they even share, or you're able to look at, let's say, the percentage of your asymmetrical steps uh, that you know they they gather all this all this information and and you know it's up to us as as educators to also open the children's eyes to this kind of thing that uh, you know it is being collected from them um, when they log on to Netflix you create an account uh, the data starts gathering up and and you know there are a lot of uh, let's say different things that. Uh, you know, so many layers of personalization and, and this kind of thing is collected from them all of the time. So they should be owners of the data and we should be able to use that data um, as as whether it be in Spotify, listening to better music in, in uh, of course, much of that is automated, but but not yet in, in the, let's say, cognitive processes of learning. Uh, so when we do the, let's say, conclusions from the data, um, we are able to use Power BI, which is a Microsoft program that uh, we did some interventions in in one space, and and this graph just show that you know the levels of uh, sound level were a bit changed. Uh, so going back to the wearables, um, let's say in in the not saying when, but but there are more experts maybe in the audience, but we'll be able to gather more and more data. We have done some brain brain uh, scanning uh, pilots with with our students, and it's not for not so that you know when we gather this kind of things. Uh, what, the things we have to remember is is of course that we are doing it in a really ethical way. Uh, the data and the ownership of the data should be with the learners. Uh, it's not for us teachers to to evaluate, but for us to help the children understand the data that is being collected with different kind of uh, devices. So whether it be an activity meter or or let's say some kind of a brain brain band or or whatever the device, uh, that is something that uh, is a skill of the future that we need to be involved in. Uh, we as teachers have to be active in in this kind of sense that you know we understand what kind of things are going on in in let's say in society and in in learning and and we have to have an impact on those that uh, the technology and the data that is being collected is used in a in a sensible and ethical way so that's about about it uh sadly the the time is so so short but but there are many great things ahead so, so thank you for this uh, possibility to be part of, of the Navigado conference and, and looking forward to cooperating with you in, in many, many, uh, hopefully as many sectors as possible. So it's fun that we get to work in, in most of them and also a little bit of research. So thank you very much for this possibility.